My name is Steve Borch. I am with Black Hills Information Security. And today I'll be covering a blog post that I have up on the website called Admin's Nightmare. This is combining Hive Nightmare and Sirius Sam with Active Directory Certificate Services abuse to gain full control of an Active Directory domain. There are several ways to do this. Attack path will be covering the way that um, I find most efficient. So this year has been pretty busy as far as uh, exploits are concerned with Sirius Sam, Hive Nightmare, abusing Active Directory certificate services, and another one called Petite Potam, which is a tool created to invoke uh, authentication from Windows computers without authentication and sometimes with authentication. So we can capture some hashes from that and then use those within our attack. So our setup today, if you can see my screen here, is a Cobalt Strike C2 command and control infrastructure. So this Cobalt Strike C2 is connected into my lab. The actual C2 channel is external, so this does beacon out to the internet and back as would a real attack. So we are in a post fish compromise scenario here. So we have a user who is compromised on their computer. They clicked on a fish or something like that. We see the process update.exe is running. That's what's running our Cobalt Strike agent. We also have the Petite Potam tool we'll talk about a little bit, and then a version of NTLM Relay X that we'll be using to redirect some of our traffic. So getting started with this, we're going to need a few things. We'll need a payload to be on the system or some form of Cobalt Strike or C2 agent readily available to execute because we're going to use Sirius SAM. And if you look on Black Hills Information Security website, we have a very good link uh, and it's in my blog post to a article by Jeff McJunkin and it covers Sirius SAM and Hive Nightmare to the T. So I recommend going and reading about that if you're more interested on the details of how this exploit works. So that's the first thing we'll be doing is a serious SAM. We'll be attempting to pull the registry hives, SAM and system hives and parse those on the fly and get some local password hashes that we can use to elevate privileges. So in order to do so, we're gonna start off in our Cobalt Strike agent and we're going to start from the C Windows Tasks folder. So C Windows Tasks is world readable and writable. Makes a great place for adversaries to store their things, their wares which is what we're going to do. So in this case, I have another Cobalt Strike C2 loader called update.exe. I'm gonna drop this to disk, already on disk, but this will uh, is what we're going to launch with our exploit code to get us a system prompt. We also need the awesome WinDivert tool. WinDivert is part of Portbender. Portbender is a tool that integrates with Cobalt Strike that allows you to do the, just that, bend ports. So let's say we have port 445. We want any incoming traffic to hit uh, this PC on port 445 to be redirected somewhere else. So you need to have system level access and you need a driver in this case to do so. Driver in this case is the Windivert driver, which is a legitimate signed driver. Uh, if you want to recompile it and use your own signature, I would suggest doing that. In this contrived lab scenario, we'll just be using what's uh, what comes with the tool. We're gonna go ahead and upload uh, Windivert. It's probably already there. Sure thing, it's already there. So we'll go ahead and execute our uh, CVE 2021-36934 exploit. Now this can be found on GitHub as well. This exploit is uh, open source and you can find it in a link on our blog post as well. So what this is going to do, this is gonna parse those um, shadow copied registry hives and then give us some password hashes potentially. So there we go, we saw some things fly by on the screen. Let's go ahead and see what those are. Um, so first off, we task the beacon to run the um, run the tool. And we see that we have volume shadow copies two. Goes through these. And we see that we have a uh, user Philip Fry. So this is a domain user. And then the domain administrator as well. So we have some BCC2 hashes here that we could try to crack. These password hashes are extremely hard to crack as far as time 
So we'll pass on these for now, but, and you cannot pass these hashes like we can with an NTLM hash, which is what we're going to do next. So we'll pass on these. Uh, we do see that the SAM hashes came back. We have the administrator RID 500. We have the guest account, default account, and the WDAG utility account, and then a user. So it looks like they probably renamed an administrative user here. So when you see those have the same password hash. So what we're going to attempt to do is pass the hash against this system and become the local administrator. So a tool we're going to use for that is called Sharp SMB Exec. It is also available on GitHub and a link to that is available on our website or on this blog post. So the command that will kick that off is Sharp SMB Exec. Uh, we give it a target, local host, right? We're going to target our own system and attempt to elevate to local administrator or system. Uh, we use the hash here that we found, uh, username administrator, and then the command that we're going to run is command.exe forward slash C, and then C to, uh, Windows tasks and update.exe. So there we have our payload that we're going to run. If we kick this off. It's going to go ahead and run this for us. And the way this is executing in Cobalt Strike with execute assembly is it's loading basically .NET programs in memory to execute it against this target. So we're not dropping this to disk per se. We are executing it in memory. The way this does this is it spawns a sacrificial process, injects into that process, and over named pipes gets the output back. This is detectable via EDR. Um, there are some ways around that, which will be out of the scope of this talk today. So we won't worry too much about EDR bypass or anything like that. So we'll give that a second to come back. And there we go. So we have a system beacon and we can see the little asterisk here, the star that um, we are in an elevated context. Go ahead and sleep this down to zero, zero, because we're going to proxy through this beacon. So this beacon has to be interactive. Cobalt Strike is an asynchronous command and control platform, meaning send and receive, post and get. So it does not keep a channel open consistently. So by default, we're using a sleep of 60 seconds here. So we're gonna sleep this down to zero. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and you can spool up commands. So we're going to move to the Windows Tasks folder because when we run Port Bender, Port Bender has to load the driver that is in C Windows Tasks. So that's kicking off. It's about to come back. In Cobalt Strike, there is a help menu. So we can type help R port forward. What we're going to use next is the R port forward command. We are a system context, but by default, we can't listen to port 445 because it's being used, right? So we need a driver to do that for us, which is where wind divert comes in. So what we're going to do here in this case is we're going to R port for the elite port. Um, we're gonna say, send that back to 127.001 port 445. But the thing to remember with Cobalt Strike's R port forward command is we're remote forwarding back to the team server in this case. So we'll be sending that back, the IP address 127.001 that actually resides on our team server. So we can tunnel this, but there's other Cobalt Strike commands to tunnel this back to your own Kali VM or whatever VM you're using. But in this case, we're gonna do this from the team server. Go ahead and R port forward. So that's the elite port. So here on the Bender PC, 192.168.253.140, we are now listening on 31337. Well, that's not 445. So we need port bender to do that lift for us. Load port bender, we go to script manager, and we load the port bender.cna script, right? That's going to load the port bender tool for us and give us the command port bender redirect we're gonna redirect inbound 445 to our 31337. All right, and then that's gonna redirect anything that comes back to our team server. This bottom screen here is our team server's shell. So um, we're going to be listening in this case on our team server. So let's go ahead and bend that traffic. 
there we go. Configuring redirection of connections from 445 to 31337. Now the final piece of this is a SOX proxy. So in order to send data back through our Cobalt Strike Beacon, we will need to SOX proxy through the beacon. So we need some way to listen on the team server to send data back. So we'll do a SOX. I'll set it to port 9050. So this does not open port 9050 on the Bender PC. This opens 9050 on our team server. So now we can SOX proxy back out and into the target network. From here, we can execute our certificate services attack. Uh, there are several ways to get the address or the fully qualified domain name, which you need the FQDN in this case to, to use this. In this case, we have crt.planetexpress.local, which is our certificate server running the web enrollment service. So we have a URI there that would be the same on any system pretty much that we would encounter on an assessment. In this case, we have HTTPS enabled. It is not always enabled. Did that in my lab to make sure that this works. There is another awesome tool called AD, uh, Active Directory CS Pwn out there. I believe it's by BATSEC, which is great. It'll do some of this automated, but you need a few caveats there. Um, so we're gonna do this this way. Both tools will support now HTTP or HTTPS, such as Impact, it does here too. We're going to listen for SMBV2. Again, we're listening on the team server and we're forwarding traffic to our team server on port 445. So we're gonna to need to listen for SMBV2. We're gonna tell it to do the Active Directory Certificate Services attack. And then the template we're gonna use is the domain controller. Our attack path, if you refer to our blog post, shows a graphic of the attacker phishing the users and then sending this to the domain controller. So what we're doing is we're gonna use Petit Potam to invoke the domain controller to send us a um, its machine hash, right? It's machine account hash. So not a user, but the machine account, which is technically part of Active Directory, so we can use it to authenticate. We're gonna forward that machine account hash over to the Active Directory certificate services log in, get a certificate for the machine account of the domain controller. And then with that certificate, we can load that into a tool like Rubius or Impacket and create a Kerberos ticket that'll allow us to then become the domain controller, at which point we can uh, perform actions such as DC sync, which will give us all the password hashes from the domain controller. With all that being said, let's kick off our listening post here with NTLM Relay X. So on the Cobalt Strike server, we are waiting for any inbound connections. We can then proxy in our Petit Potam tool. Now this will target the domain controller, which is at 135, and it'll say, hey, send your password or your authentication back to 140. 140 is our compromised host on vendor PC. So the domain controller sends that back to us. We forward that on to the certificate services. So there's several uh, port bending things going on here at once. Let's go ahead and send that through. We can see up top, we do get a new connection that came back through the port bending. We see that the certificate services attack is being performed. And we have a certificate. So right there, we have a base 64 certificate of user DC01 dollar sign. That dollar sign means it is a machine account. So we have the computer uh, certificate here, and we can load this into a tool called Rubius. Uh, Rubius is part of Ghost Pack on GitHub, again by SpectreOps. So now from this system beacon, we can execute our command. And unfortunately, it doesn't paste in here very well. So let me see if I can get this in the spot. Uh, okay, so now that we have the certificate for the domain controller, uh, we can use execute assembly to run Rubius. And unfortunately, let me see if I can make this a little bigger. There we go. So the execute assembly command that we're going to run is the Rubius tool. We're going to use ask TGT to get a ticket granting ticket. 
for user DC01 dollar sign. We paste in our certificate hash, our base64 encoded certificate, and then we PTT pass the ticket in Rubius. So with all of this, we can paste that into Cobalt Strikes Beacon Console, hit enter. There we can see we successfully imported the ticket as user DC01. So TGT request successful, received output. So this Base64 encoded ticket is now an uh, authentication package for DC01. But with the PTT flag that we added, we successfully imported it instead. So this user, this session, this Cobalt Strike agent right now has DC01 dollar signs authentication. So from here, we should be able to DC sync the entire domain. And there we go. It's a small domain, but we were able to capture all of the hashes for the users and computers in the domain with this attack. So pretty powerful, right? We've quickly identified the Active Directory um, attack path that we could take here from Petit Potam all the way back to parsing the registry hive, the sysballs with, not the sysballs, but the registry hives system and security and the SAM hives with the hive nightmare exploit. So we've gone from normal user, elevate to system, bend all the ports, attack the certificate services server, gain domain controller uh, level access as a domain controller actually, and then DC sync attack the domain controller to gain uh, access as the DC and grab all the password hashes. So now we can impersonate any of these users, uh, become the domain admin, anything that, uh, that we could do with the user's hash, we can then start doing from here. So pretty quick, actually you could script and automate out most of this um, to uh, work in an environment uh, as, as we just did in a matter of, you know, a few minutes pretty much walk through this attack step by step practice this enough, you can do this in just a few minutes on a network. So it's pretty scary stuff. Patches have been released. Make sure you go out and patch your stuff and monitor for things like this. We have some uh, interesting points on some of the links in the articles on this blog post. Make sure you follow those and uh, stay secure. So if you're following this and you want to go practice this out, this does require a little bit of setup. Uh, with a domain controller and a certificate services server uh, and a Windows 10 host. So make sure you have all three of those pieces set up and um, in order to perform this test attack. So, all right, please refer to the blog post for more information and uh, appreciate your time. Thank you.